Hey everybody, my name is Angie Morenga. You're watching Just Angie and it's another amazing Sunday and it's the Sunday Sermon. And I wanted to talk about anointing but from a different angle. I'm so glad that we can talk about it from so many different angles. But I'll, I'll read the scripture. In Isaiah 61 it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed and commissioned me to bring good news to the humble and afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted, to proclaim release from confinement and condemnation to physical and spiritual captives and freedom to prisoners and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So that's just verse one and that's the amplified version. But I wanted to bring, as I was reminiscing, I was thinking of, of the day of my ordination and I was thinking that even when we ordain and commission, even when we do PLF because we commission people, we anoint people and commission them because they've been through a process to go out there and to lead and to do it differently. Actually, to, we engage marketplace leaders. We pray the Holy Spirit changes their mindset and, the, and their thinking and their thoughts about themselves and around, around their roles and assignment in the marketplace. Then they are, they are anointed and released to lead. Yeah, But I was thinking about anointing. The anointing is already in you. And I, I just want to read something that uh, when Archbishop Jerry Kibarabara anointed me, he did something. He When he ordained me, he he put the bishops thing. He said he said this is only done for bishops. Of course, I was in the ground, so I couldn't see it. But he said, and he put the I think it was a, a a horn, and he put it on my shoulder. But what I was coming out with that is that God, the, the anointing was already in me, and it's a statement that the archbishop said that I'll never forget. He said he said because he saw he saw something. He saw something in me and he said, he actually said, he said, that woman is anointed by the grace of God. She's anointed. So we've got to anoint her. And that's the thing that's been going through my head is that, is that something, he saw something. And then when he saw this something, now he anointed that something. So I was, I was, I was coming from the premise that whatever God anoints is already in you. It's like he's, it's, it's an outward expression of something that is already inward. It's already in there. I'm sure, very sure that the Archbishop was not planning to, 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 he was just planning, he was just wanted to ordain me. He didn't want to do all those extra things he did. But as the, as the service co continued and as God checked in and did this thing because he's an obedient servant of God, there are things that God asked him to do that he did that were not in the ordinary. But what is it? Because the oil is already in you. Nobody can can put the oil in you. Just like they say, they can't, we can't put purpose in you. God put purpose in you before time. It says in Jeremiah 1, 5 that before I knew, before you were formed, before you were placed in your mother's womb, I knew you. So there's a knowing. There's a knowing that God had. There's a purpose he had. Then he placed you in your mother's womb. Then you came out into this world. So it's it's in you. It's it's um, I feel like saying it's an inner me. It's in me. It's inside me. Nobody can remove it. Nobody can take it away except yourself. I think the only person who can take away God's purpose is yourself. When you refuse to obey him but I love the fact that that the anointing is inside the, it, the anointing is inside you and therefore we can just outwardly anoint you but God has already commissioned you God has already anointed you God has already equipped you empowered you because the other thing there is the anointing breaks the yoke and it gives an empowerment you know there's a great um, lots of debate around maybe one day we'll do a video about impartation but it's there because the Bible says set apart for me Paul and Barnabas for the work of ministry and there was the impartation and the laying of hands and there's a place where Paul came and said have you guys received the Holy Spirit no we just received uh, I think baptism so you know there, there's so much more in God's word we can explain Explain everything in God's word, you know. It's not like it's not there. Set apart for me Paul and Barnabas for the work of ministry. Lay their hands on them. There's an impartation that takes place. But it's 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 anointing something that already God has preordained and pre-commissioned and put you put inside you, you know. And I really want us to think about that. And also I've been thinking about how sometimes when we are anointed, that and everyone is anointed, um, because you're commissioned with something by God, you're brought into this world to fulfill a purpose. But then there's an outward anointing now that we can put oil on you and anoint something to propel you into something else because anointing is about empowerment. But there's a lot of frustration because I kept thinking about David. David was anointed. But even after defeating Goliath, David went back to minding the few sheep, you know, and I'd be thinking about these few sheep. There were very few, very few sheep. I mean, even his brothers were like, who did you leave your few sheep? You know, emphasis, few. But 
there's a frustration I'm feeling that can be, when you know that you're anointed, there's a greatness inside you. God has called you to do great things, but all around you is what seemingly looks like a sense of failure. It looks like a sense of, of, of lack. It looks like a sense of fruitlessness, you know. Um, you look undervalued, you're the underdog, you, you feel this you, that you have this great calling on your life, but nothing around you is aligning. What I wanted to tell you is to do is to wait, wait for the process. There's something powerful I heard. I think I heard John Gray say it, and I heard Bishop, uh, Bishop Walker, J Bishop Joseph Walker say, say it, that platforms, because sometimes we're yearning for this gift and this anointing to be released to the world, and he was saying you cannot be placed on a platform before your time, because platforms... That's not where preparation happens. You're prepared before. You're prepared in a process before God gives you a platform, before God gives you an opportunity, before God gives you a promotion, before God gives you something great. I'm just reminded of Joseph. Joseph, in, in, in his human nature, because we are all human also, if his brothers had come at the wrong time, there are things that Joseph needed to go through. So by the time he meets his brothers, he's not hanging them upside down or torturing them slowly, which is a normal human reaction because these guys, they sold him. They, he went to another land. He was a slave. He had gone to prison. I mean, these guys, so much grief had taken place because of these brothers that when you see them and you have power, you say, aha, good, they have come. They have brought themselves. Now let me show them. But that was not his reaction. Why process? process there was this anointing even joseph he used to see those dreams he'd see dreams things are bowing but there was no time to bow it was now time to be processed so that you're ready for that bowing process this oil actually i'm thinking even oil needs to be processed by the time they squeeze oil out of a of of an of, of an olive these days they even have avocado oil you have so many kind of things that they, they press the oil out of yeah that's the process the process is the pressing the process is the drama so right now if you're feeling you're anointed but the drama around you is excess you're like this is too much that this is process so submit to the process trust in the process walk through the process because that process is preparing you so by the time you get like joseph into a place of leadership that you are able to make the right decision. There's a lot of wisdom because of the things you've been through. You are very, there's a humility. Of course, I think even in the marketplace of tests, they say there's this like imposter syndrome where you feel, I mean, this is, these guys really know who I am. And most of us are like that. You're like, hey, do these people know who I am? But the process should have processed you. And the anointing of God is already in you. But then God can anoint and commission you now to propel yourself into something else. So I, I, I felt that. And then I felt even with David and both with, with David. David was very good with his sheep, you know. He didn't have to kill the lion and the bear, but he did. There was an anointing inside him. You see, this, this same anointing that causes you to kill the lion or the bear, to do things that are not normal. But you do them and you do them because there's an anointing inside you. There was definitely an anointing inside Joseph that allowed him to go through that process. I'm sure, I'm sure there was pain, you know, because, you know, in the Bible, there are many things that have not been explained because we can't explain every feeling, every emotion. I'm sure the writers cannot explain it. But there must be feelings and emotions and God said, I'm going to be great and nothing is happening around me that indicates any kind of greatness, you know. There's just drama and trouble and I don't understand. So there's... This thing that we have to understand that platforms do not prepare you. You are prepared for platforms. Um, promotions do not prepare you. You are prepared for the promotion. You are prepared for the positioning in the marketplace. There is a preparation that is taking place. So I just wanted to, to say that. And you've got to allow, I feel like, the anointing to break, the anointing to be processed, the anointing to be released, you know. And it will... It will come at the, at the appropriate time that God will propel you into all that he, that he has for you. So I wanted to just, I think, affirm us, encourage us with Isaiah 61 that says that the spirit of the Lord is upon us and God has anointed us, commissioned us. The anointing comes from God. The enablement, the empowerment comes from God, but then it is realized with every good thing through a process you know if you take a raw product through a process it comes out at the other end a different person that is what i feel like god is doing with us you know so some of you got to figure out where you are in the process and it reminds me before i pray and lead us in the prayer of salvation of the matrix there's a part i love in the matrix where the guy keeps going through things he, he goes out he he he, he falls into deep uh, um, like cavities he has no hair by the time he comes out he's a completely different guy that's what the process is doing that's what God is, uh, is working on the 
anointing through a process so that when it's released, there's this amazing end product called you that God can work with, that God can trust, that has an, a, a, a very large element of humility. It has courage. It has faith. You know, the Bible's oxymoron, you know, says um, uh, there's always the oxymoron of God. He says that I will let the rich say, I know that the poor say I am rich, let the weak say I am strong. So there's, it sounds like so humility is in the same sentence as, as faith and courage and boldness, but there's a lot of humility required for leaders that God will always use. I don't want to say just in this season, in every season, there's a humility that's required. And part of the humility, I think, is knowing that of the feeling, it shouldn't overtake you of, hey, I'm not worthy of this. That that imposter thing, that thing of, I please, I, if these guys really knew who I was, I wouldn't be here. Uh, but we are worthy. We are worthy because God counted it worthy and counted it worthy to send his son to die for us. So there's a, there's a price that has been paid for us and therefore we're worthy. You know, and we should feel that, but we should never let it get to our head. We should always understand. That's why with every response, even, even on social media, people were seen writing, by the grace of God, for God's glory. And I, I thank those who trained me in ministry because they trained me to say that. They said there is nothing that you have or will ever have that is not the grace of God. It's by the grace of God. It's not by my own power, my own strength, my own... No, it is by the grace of God and it is all working for his glory. Let's say the salvation prayer. That would be a really good place to release the anointing that is already inside of you because it's already there. God said he has already commissioned you with it. But when you say the salvation prayer, you sort of kick things into gear to begin to align, to lead you into God's perfect, good, perfect, and pleasing will for your life. So let's say the salvation prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day. I come before you this day asking you to be the Lord and Savior of my life, realizing that I have been anointed and commissioned for a purpose and a reason but that that anointing requires the salvation of God to take it to the next level and for it to unfold into everything that God has ordained. So today, this day, I ask you to be Lord and Savior of my life. I believe that you're the Son of God, and I invite you into my life, into my space, into all areas of my life, and ask you to take over. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So that's the salvation prayer. Let's just say a prayer now. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We thank you so much for the message about the anointing and the oil and that whatever it's, the anointing is already in us, Lord. You have ordained us, you have commissioned us, but that's an outward expression of something that's already in us, Lord. So I want to pray that even this week and this season as we move on and as we listen to these sermons, that Father, Lord, we will the anointing of God will be unlocked in us, Lord. It will be unlocked by our obedience. It will be unlocked through realization, through perception, so that, Father, the, the outward expression is because of something that's working on us inwardly. And I, I feel like it's like how a capsule of oil can burst. So, Father, I pray that the anointing that is in us would begin to burst and flow and overflow into all areas of our lives. You anointed us and commissioned us for a purpose, and we pray that that would become clear. We pray and we thank you because you're preparing us. The anointing is preparing us for a platform, for a position, for an occupation, for even a marriage, Lord. It's preparing us for, to have children and to raise them in the ways of God. It's preparing us for many things. So I pray that we shall be totally submitted to the process of the release of that anointing and to understand that the outward anointing is only an, an anointing of an inward reality that God has already ordained. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Bye.